All right, guys. So previously, we were looking at this question, BMAT 2013, question 60, to do with proportionality. And hopefully, um, you found out, guys, that the answer here was D. And if you didn't find out, remember, guys, this is still early days. It really doesn't matter. And hopefully, you managed to uh, follow my work solution. But now, guys, we move on to the next question, which is BMAT 2012, question 8. There's a formula which connects the going G with the rise of stairs in a staircase is um, below. So you have G equals 5 plus square root of essentially what's inside the square root and then and it says rearrange the formula to give r in terms of g so guys pause the video give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute and then we'll be going through the solution okay guys so what we need to do here uh, is rearrange the formula to give r in terms of g so we really need to bring r on its own so the first thing i'm going to do guys is shift the five to the other side so shifting the five to the other side i'm going to get g minus five equals the square root of seven uh, nine minus r squared plus nine Right, so we have that, and then then I'm going to get rid of the square root. That's the next obvious thing to do, isn't it? So square both sides are going to get g minus five all squared equals uh, seven nine minus r squared plus nine. Right, and then the next thing to do obviously is shift the nine across. Then I'm going to get g minus five squared minus nine equals seven nine minus r all squared, and then obviously take the seven across. So you're going to get g minus five all squared minus nine over 7 equals 9 minus r all squared and then obviously get rid of the uh, squared isn't it so square root so then i'm going to get g minus 5 all squared minus 9 over 7 uh, all square rooted that's going to give me 9 minus r right so then if i put the minus r to the other side it would become an r and i take the square root and everything underneath the square root to the other side i'm going to get r equals 9 minus the square root of um, g minus 5 all squared minus 9 over 7 right, and it's obviously going to be all square rooted also another thing is guys that um, i forgot to add is when i square root uh, when i square rooted um, in the step before this should actually be a plus or minus remember these square roots so you can get the plus version or the minus version right so then obviously uh, yeah so here essentially what i'm going to get minus r is going to become an r when you shift to the other side but the 9 Rather than being a plus or minus, it will be minus plus here. So it will be 9 minus plus, because obviously the signs are going to switch. So if it was a plus, it would be a minus on the other side. If it was a minus, it would be a plus on the other side. And then that's what we're going to get. But as you can see, guys, in all the options, um, it's either, you know, a minus in there or it's a plus in there, right? So that's the, so the question is, which one is it going to be? So what, um, what it's likely to be over here, guys, is um, as you can see, guys, the the going is larger isn't it so the, since the going is larger the likelihood is that the thing underneath the square root um, is likely to be bigger than nine so you you probably not not going to have the minus version because you're going to have my nine minus a bigger number which is going to give you a negative number and the rise has to be a positive number right because uh, it's really the magnitude it's talking about isn't it so it has to be a positive number therefore hopefully guys you can appreciate then that in this question the answer would be then c Right. Um, so a bit a, a load of steps is, but um, even guys, if you're some of you guys might be super good at maths. If you guys are super good at maths, those guys who are super good at maths, um, you can probably some of you might just be able to see this in your head without redoing really these calculations. If if that's you, that's good. If that's not you, not to worry, guys. Um, doodling on the paper, but obviously uh, getting fast as you go along is always going to uh, serve you good as well. But hopefully, you guys, that's made sense. And yes, really look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, guys, so previously you're looking at BMAT 2012 question 8. Do, uh, to do this question, to do a rearranging equation. Hopefully, guys, the individual steps isn't too difficult, but I agree. Overall, um, some of you might, it could have been quite difficult, especially some of the um, rearranging, really, the steps. There's quite a few steps involved there to get this done in one minute. But hopefully, guys, um, over time, you'll get better. And don't worry about that if you couldn't get it in a minute. And this, and also, guys, if you couldn't get it in a minute, don't worry, because there will be some question we could do much faster than a minute. And that will obviously save you time, uh, extra time with these kind of questions. But now, guys, we move on to BMAT 2012, question 24. And this has a star. And if I could give this question, guys, I remember this question. If I can give this two star, I would, because this one's quite a difficult question. Um, but anyway, guys, it says the new sign for a local business contains two different sections. One of the sections will be produced from wood, while the other will be from metal. Metal is three times as expensive as wood. The cost of metal needed for each sign is pushed to the diameter of the sign, while the cost of wood needed is pushed to the square of the diameter. If the diameter of the uh, sign is doubled, then the total cost of the materials will be tripled. It says what percentage of the sign um, is metal. So guys, pause the video, uh, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute, and then we'll be going through the solution. 
Okay, guys, so let's go through this. So um, we know then that essentially the, the, the cost, right? So the cost would be essentially the cost of the wood plus the cost of the metal, isn't it? Now, what's going to be the cost of the wood? So we know that the cost of the wood, uh, it says the cost of metal is proportional to that, while the cost of wood is proportional to the square of the So the cost of wood is going to be K, it's constant proportionality, and then D squared, whereas the cost of the metal is proportional. That's just going to be KD. Then that means then, uh, and also guys, remember, the constant of proportionality wouldn't necessarily... Um, wouldn't necessarily be the same for both of them. So you can't really use K and K. So I can, I'll just call this K1, right? So then that basically means C equals then uh, the cost of wood is going to be uh, K1 D squared plus the cost of the metal, which is going to be KD, right? But K1 and uh, K are different. And then it says, guys, um, uh, it says um, if the diameter is doubled, the total cost is tripled. So that basically means then that if I, from here to here, if I triple the cost, it will be 3C, and that's going to be, if I double the diameter, it's going to be K1. If I double the diameter now, rather than D, it's going to be 2D squared plus K2D. And then that's obviously going to be uh, 4K1D squared plus 2KD. So now we basically, um, from that, guys, we have two equations, isn't it? So what we can do with this equation, guys, is I'm going to call this equation 1, and I'll call this equation 2. What we could do, guys, is do essentially twice of equation one. So if I do equation one times two, what I'm going to get is then um, 2c equals 2k1d squared plus 2kd. Then if I minus this from the uh, from the equation two, um, 3c minus the 2c is going to be c, and then 4k1d squared minus 2 uh, k1 d squared is just going to be 2 k1 d squared isn't it? and then um, the 2 kd and the 2 kd are just going to cancel out so now now i have um, c is uh, 2 k1 d squared isn't it so i know that now what i can do with this now is i can sub this in to this equation right then if i sub that into that equation i'm going to get 2 c equals c plus 2kd isn't it and then from there obviously i know then that c equals 2kd right so i know c equals 2kd then obviously since both these are in terms of c i can equate them to each other so i can say 2k1d squared equals 2kd and obviously the twos cancel out right now k1d squared what's that essentially k1d squared uh is this isn't it is the cost of wood and kd is the cost of metal right so then if the cost of wood is the same as the cost of metal but we know that um we know that uh metal is three times as expensive right so that means in terms of ratios the amount of metal you have here is uh one and this must be three right so if the cost is the same but wood is three times cheaper right that means that you can essentially, um, you, you have three times as much wood, if that makes sense. You can comment down below, guys, if that doesn't make sense. I can try to explain it in a different way. But if the cost is the same, that means you have three times as much wood um, as metal. And therefore, guys, that means that uh, what percentage is metal is going to be one out of the total ratio, which is four. And that's going to basically be 25%, isn't it? So hopefully you can see, guys, where this question was going. But... To be honest, if I saw this in an exam, uh, I would probably just leave it out, probably just give it a guess um, to find the most suitable answer. I wouldn't worry about this too much. Remember, it's question 24, so it's meant to be quite difficult. But nonetheless, guys, I hopefully my uh, explanation has made sense. And as always, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, guys, so previously we had this uh, tough nut to crack, isn't it? BMAT 2012, uh, question 24. If you didn't understand that, guys, uh, just comment down below which particular part you didn't understand. If you did understand that, well, you, you're thinking, no way I would have got this under exam conditions. Don't worry. Um, this is probably the hardest question in the BMAT maths I've ever seen. But either way, guys, now we move on, uh, hopefully, to easier questions, which is going to be this question, BMAT 2011, question 4. This says, simplify this, 3x bracket 3x to the power of minus uh, 1 over 3, all to the power of 3. So, guys, pause the video, give yourself a minute, be sure to be back after that minute. We'll be going through the solution. Okay, guys, well, let's simplify this. So, remember, BMAT is so going to deal with brackets first. So, 3x bracket, and then 
all of this thing to the power of 3. So 3 to the power of 3 is going to be 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is 27. And it's going to be x. And x to the power is minus, I said, all to the power of 3. Remember, you have to times the powers. It's going to be x to the power of minus 1. Right? And then, obviously, what's going to happen is that the x and x to the power of minus 1 is going to cancel out. So you're just left with 27 times 3, which is uh, 60 plus 21, which is 81, isn't it? So therefore, guys, hopefully you can understand then that this question, the answer would be C. So hopefully, guys, that wasn't really too difficult. And hopefully uh, you understood why C was the answer. And we look forward to seeing you next video as always, guys. All right, guys. So previously you looked at BMAT 2011 question four. Hopefully much simpler than uh, some of the previous questions we've been looking at. Uh, but nonetheless, guys, if you struggle with that, just put comment down below and we can go through any of um, tech room difficulties you have. But now, guys, we move on to this question. This is the graph of the following equations are drawn. And says, which pair of graphs do not intersect? So, guys, pause the video. Give yourself a minute. Be sure to be back after that minute where we're going to go over the solution. Okay, guys, so let's go through this. So which of these don't intersect? So with this kind of question, guys, what I would highly advise is just draw a sketch of um, how these graphs will be looking. Um, so there's one way, obviously, you can do this is do, you know, simultaneous equations. If you get no solutions, uh, that basically means that um, they don't intersect, isn't it? Because no solution exists for that. But if you're going to do simultaneous equations for this, uh, what you're going to do quite a bit, like, let's see, so you're going to do six simultaneous equations. And for a mark, that's really not worth it, isn't it? So the best thing to do here is just to sketch this out. So y equals 3x minus 2. So you know it intersects the y axis at minus 2, which is there. And the gradient would be around, would basically be 3. So let's just say that looks something like that, right? And that's minus 2. So this is the first one. And then y equals x squared, right? So y equals x squared is going to look, um, it's going to look somewhat like this, isn't it? So it's going to look somewhat like that. And it's, since it's x squared, it's going to kind of really rise exponentially in that area. So this is also important to see over here, guys, that um, the y equals x squared is likely not going to meet the y equals um, 3x minus 2 because this one is really, it kind of shallow and then it really steepens up um, as you go along, isn't it? Whereas this one, it just has a fixed gradient. And uh, number one just has a fixed gradient and just following this uh, trajectory, right? So that's not going to say. And then you have... 1 minus x squared. So minus x squared is basically just an unhappy face, isn't it? So it's an unhappy face. And 1 basically means that it's going to move in the y-axis by 1. Remember, transformation of graphs. If you guys need help with any of these subjects, guys, just comment down below and we can make a separate video on that. But uh, it will cross the y-axis at 1 and be an unhappy face. So it will be something like this, right? And then that's obviously going to be uh, 3. And then the last one, x plus 6. So gradient of 1 and it crosses y is at 6. So 6 is going to be, let's just say, somewhat here. And the gradient is going to be um, much more shallow um, than the 3x. So it's probably going to be something like, let's just say, something like that. Right? So that's going to be number 4, like that. And we can extend the x-axis in that direction. And it says, which of these then, which of these are definitely not intersecting? So clearly, guys, hopefully you can appreciate here, the ones that are definitely not going to intersect is 3 and 4. Right? The reason it's three and four because this one's gonna follow this and it's gonna get steeper, steeper, steeper as you go along, like that. Whereas this one is just literally following its own kind of following its own path over there. So that's never gonna meet. Uh, three and four are never gonna meet. Whereas the other ones, all of them um, meet at some point. So hopefully, guys, that has made sense. And as always, really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, guys, so previously we were looking at this question, BMAT 2011, question 16, talking about which uh, graphs don't intersect and which ones do. Um, this was really a question, guys, of graphs and drawing graphs and a bit of uh, transformation of graphs in there as well. If any, any of these topics, guys, don't make sense, just comment down below. We can have a separate video on that. That's no problem. Whatever you suggest, guys, we're all, help, we're all here to help you. Um, and, yes, uh, we can help you whatever your needs are. Now, guys, we're going to move on to the next question, which is BMAT 2010, uh, question 20. So it says, the total surface area of a cylinder is numerically the same as its volume. The radius of the cylinder is R, and the uh, height is H. And it says, express H in terms of R. So, guys, pause the video. Give yourself a minute. Be sure to be back after that minute uh, where we're going to go over the solution. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So let's go through this. So let's sketch out this um, cylinder. So I'm quite bad at drawing. But I'll give this a shot anyway. So this is our cylinder. Let's say somewhat like that. I actually think that's a decent drawing, actually. And then we have the radius. So the radius is that, so half the diameter. And we have the height, which is going to be this, isn't it? That's going to be the height. OK, so then um, hopefully this is basically a prism, isn't it? So remember, the surface area of uh, the, sorry, the volume of a prism is basically just a cross-sectional area, which is just a circle in this case. So obviously, that's going to be pi times radius squared. 
and then the times the height. So you just basically imagine you have this the, this circle stacked up several times on top of each other, and if you have that ske uh, sketch up on top of each other several times, in precisely the height uh, in the height of a whatever the height of the cylinder is in this case, which is h, uh, if you have them stacked up, you basically give yourself the volume, isn't it, um, of this uh, cylinder, and then obviously the uh, area, right? So the area is going to be so you have. So what you have is the two uh, circles up and down. So you have two pi r squared, right? And then basically what you have is this curved area. So the way you can find out this curved area is just what the um, what the circumference of the circle is, which is going to be two pi r, right? Times the h. So imagine the circumference, which is basically just let's just show that kind of like that. So the circumference, which is kind of like that, and then if you times that through the um, through the height. Right, that's going to give you kind of the curved surface of the cylinder. So it's going to be two pi r h. Right, and then it's saying um, these two things are equal. So that means that pi r squared h equals. And then from that, guys, also from a, I'm going to take a factor of two pi r, which is common between two both of them. So two pi r, and then obviously what's going to be left over is r plus h. Right, and then obviously straight off from this, I can just cancel out the pi's. I can cancel out the R and this that will just get rid of the square there. So then what I'm left with is R H equals um two R plus two H basically. And then we they they want us to uh work out what H is. So I just bring all the terms of H on one side. That means R H minus two H equals two R. Take a factor of H H um R minus two equals two R. That means that H equals two R over r minus 2 and that clearly maps on guys to uh, option a so hopefully guys that has made sense and that was uh, of good use to you um but other than that guys uh hopefully that was clear and yes we look forward to seeing you in the next video all right guys so welcome back so previously you looked at this question bmat 2010 uh, question 20 um really just testing rearranging equations and working out the volumes and surface areas of prism but hopefully all of that has made sense now guys we move on um to the actually the last question of, of the series uh on algebra uh, question 24 it says the equation gives y in terms of x it says rearrange the equation to give an expression of x in terms of y so you've seen quite a bit of this guys this is going to be good revisions so guys give yourself a minute be sure to be back after that minute where we're going to go over the solutions okay guys so welcome back so let's go through this so we, we want to make here uh x the subject isn't it so the first thing you need to do is obviously shift the minus 10 to the other side so y plus 10 then is going to be 5 bracket x over 2 minus 3 all squared right then obviously what we want to do is take the 5 over the other side so y plus 10 over 5 equals x over 2 minus 3 all squared then i'm going to square root but remember guys when you square root um you can get the positive or the negative version of this isn't it so you're going to write plus or minus and obviously since we have no cons, i remember one of the previous questions had rise and going and those are all positive parameters so then we can say it was the positive version but here we don't really know anything to do with the context of this question it can be positive or negative and that's going to be x over 2 minus 3 take the 3 over to the other side next um that's going to be then um plus or minus square root of y plus 10 over 5 and then obviously plus 3 equals x over 2 and then obviously take the divide by 2 the other side is going to be times by 2 so then that's going to be plus or minus 2 lots of this square root thing which is going to be y plus 10 over 5 uh, plus 3 times 2 which is going to be 6 and that's going to be x so this then nicely maps on guys to uh, which one does actually so that nicely maps on to i think it's a isn't it plus or minus 2 y plus 10 over 5 plus 6 yeah it's a so hopefully, guys, you can uh, appreciate then why A is the answer in this case. And this was really just a revision of this common topic of rearranging equations. But guys, really look forward to seeing you in the next series, actually, now, uh, which I think is going to be geometry. So we look forward to seeing you then, guys.